Hello, Star Wars players. This is Jerry Queso Sauce 37, bringing you some commentary from the European Championships. This is game one of day two at the European Championships. Dark side player is Angelo Consoli, and he is playing Rops with established control and uh, in. Secret Plans and Imperial Arrest Order, and I'm not sure what that AI uh, effect is. Um, this is a card I haven't seen before. So, maybe Code Clearance, or... Oh, he's actually going to go with Endor Shield. Okay. So, oh, okay, maybe that was just a uh, AI Endor Shield. So, Endor Shield, and Establish Control, and... Secret Plans, Imperial Arrest Order will be your starting effects from him. Chris Menzel is your light side player. He's playing light side Senate with a walkling, strike planning, and squadron assignments start. I'm pretty sure that card is squadron assignments. He's got the Senate and the JCC out. Um, so yeah, these guys are getting going. Thanks for being here for this game. I'm going to be trying to bring you commentary for all eight of the day one games um, and then uh, I think we're maybe gonna have some help on the finals for uh, our uh, awesome Monday show with Chris Gogolin so stay tuned for that and then once again if you're just joining us or just uh, finding these videos uh, these are pre-recorded uh, these aren't live this is uh, already happened so if you want to know the results uh, you can go to the uh, the message boards uh, or the slack chat and find out uh, more information about uh, who's winning these games but uh, I actually don't really know what uh, has happened as I've uh, just gotten home from work and stuff so this will be fun to uh, get the commentary for some of these European games thank you guys uh, for setting up this stream uh, setting up a feature match and getting these games recorded so that we could do this um, even if it is uh, after the event, it is uh, always awesome to have uh, these uh, these games recorded, and uh, so people can watch them. And uh, I'm happy to help help out and provide commentary. So thanks for watching. So here we go. We're getting going here. So Dark Side Rops V, uh, definitely one of the stronger Dark Side decks out right now. Uh, we'll see if that maintains after set 11 drops here pretty soon. Definitely uh, some discussion about uh, the power level of things. So I saw a docking bay in Angelo's hand and a lot of Imperials. Uh, lots of Imperials. So that's usually good for a Rops player to get your characters. You can uh, get your flip on. And that, that deck really uh, really shuts down a lot of uh, light side decks once it flips when you can start making those four strains minus one. All right, so I got, I got a little peek at uh, Chris Menzel's hand. He's going to play a uh, All Wings Report in combo. He had uh, Lando in hand. He had, uh, okay, and then, oh, yeah, nice. We got Domination, Fondor, Tempest One, Altar, and the Emperor. Nice. That's a really good hand. I, actually, I think both players got a, uh, a pretty satisfying starting hand. Obviously, I've never played uh, this light side Senate deck that Menzel has, but uh, for a Rops player, looking at that hand, you got a Walker, you got one of your docking bays, you got your system. You can use your Endor Shield to get uh, Piet and Ozzel. I think he got Desan in his starting hand, too, so um, he can really uh, get... Uh, Angela can really get going here as a dark side player to um, flip his objective and uh, then start just wrecking battles with the uh, Destiny modifier from the Rops V. Alright, so... Very little activation for uh, Angelo in his first turn. Only just three. Um, two from the... Or, sorry, four. Two from the Rops. Uh, we're all tier system. One one from himself, so... Gets the Spaceport Street out. I like this uh, board that they have set up for the uh, Force Piles and what have you. Um... It's uh, it's pretty neat. Kind of reminds me of those old play mats you used to get back in the day when, uh, like the the ones that were included with games, where it would show you how to do everything. Kind of got the box for the effects, and then 
the triangle with the arrows for the four spiles. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Alright, so Angelo also gets a docking bay with um, Imperial Arrest Order, and then he puts his non-Battleground docking bay out. So Angelo's got the two the two uh, raw tier sites out first turn. That should allow him to be able to flip next turn, assuming uh, Menzel doesn't invade. Goes with the Fondor system. And now we're doing some rearranging. So He's actually putting the non-Battlegrounds over there in kind of that effect box. I guess that makes sense. <clears throat> Until you wanted to play a spy there. <laughs> it also is kind of a washed out area, so there is an executor docking bay right there. Alright, so we got the executor docking bay out. Usually uh, end up putting Piet there and moving him over because of the Piet discount to the Executor. <clears throat> Angelo is going to go ahead and play Piet there. It's going to move the docking bay out of that glare spot. Thank you for that. And um, he's going to pay two force also to put to sand down. So that way next turn you can go get a shuttle with Desan. Is it Desan or Dasani? I don't know. Dasani sounds like a water bottle, so I'm going to say Desan. I said Desan. Alright, so Menzel's going to activate. He's getting three from the JCC, one from the Senate, one from Walkling, and then Angela was kind enough to give him three icons. So, decent amount for your first turn. <clears throat> I do apologize if you hear any uh, thunder and rain and stuff. It is kind of stormy uh, where I'm at right now. So, pretty crazy thunder and lightning. <coughs> Alright, so... Um, Menzel plays a couple shields, grab her, aim high. Goes with a couple senators, um, Mothma and someone else to the Senate. Looks like it probably is Palpatine. Um, flips. This you flip usually causes the um, dark side player to pull the Senate shield. That way you can't manipulate the hand. Um, but uh, yeah, it's pretty sure that's Palpatine in there with uh, Mothma. Uses Mothma's text to get the Chandrilla system. <clears throat> and then gets a political effect. And then now, if you're running political effects, it's, uh, I believe, our gravest of circumstances. Uh, if you're running political effects, then now there's no reason for Angela not to pull the shield. There he goes. Grabs the shields. Um, you know, maybe he didn't have enough force to use the hand minute that turn, but like, the the Senate shield is just um, it's very powerful when you come up against Senate because you can stop the hand manipulation and you can cancel political effects. Um, so yeah, there uh, there comes the Senate shield from Angelo. If uh, if you're running the political effects, yeah, it is kind of risky because you can get them canceled. So if you go political effects, you have to go with multiple of them. So that way, uh, they can only suspend <coughs> one per turn. So that way you have to have at least two, so that way they suspend one and you use the other one. But you're usually not ever using the um, political effect uh, uh, that you would want during the turn that you would want. During, you know, during your turn, they're going to suspend the Force Drain one. If During their turn, they're going to suspend the Battle Destiny one. And uh, so it, it's, it's a tricky game playing with the, uh, the political effects. <coughs> A lot of times you might see, like, especially Dark Side Senate just uses the Senate as kind of like an activation platform and then uses the Senators as, uh, as a way to engine the cards into your hand with a lot dot and stuff, so. I myself really like playing Senate, but um, the, the shields make it quite hard to really get going with uh, the political effects these days. 
All right, so now we'll see. Uh, we'll see Menzel get both of his political effects out. He's got uh, I will not defer in the gravest of circumstances. And uh, now Angelo's going to use his Admiral Piet pull to get uh, Thrawn, the new Thrawn. Um, I'm not going to try to say his full card title, but it's it's the new Thrawn, the commander alien uh, Imperial combo Thrawn. And then uh, Menzel's just going to take a moment to read the Rop's objective. Guessing we're going to see Angelo try to flip this turn if he can get another Raltier site out. He's got some dudes in hand, a vehicle in hand. Um, and then he can Docking Bay Transit the other guys over. So we'll probably see a flip from Angelo just to get the. Uh, get his objective flips, pull any card he wants, and uh, get that uh, Force Strain modifier going and the Battle Destiny modifier going. Alright, so yeah, Chris is making sure he understands all of the cards that Angelo's got out. The Domination, uh, domination, you have to uh, occupy um, at least as many battlegrounds as the uh, light side player does. Because if they, can, if they occupy more battlegrounds than you do, then uh, domination doesn't work. Or is suspended. So yeah, Angelo is now looking through his reserve deck. He's got the prefix office that he can pull with his objective and also the city is in there but he'll probably pull the office although yeah if he if he, <clears throat> if he flips this turn then he won't be able to get um, that fourth site out um, unless he decides to pull it with uh, the flip text so could be interesting if he wants to wait a turn to get both the sites out um, I think I would probably put the pressure on here and go ahead and flip, but um, that is just probably what I would do. You want to make sure that you get you get going, because if if they take over a site or two or your system, then you, it could be a lot harder for you to flip. So, all right. So it goes with the office on the left, the docking bay in the middle, and then the spaceport street on the end. Um, you probably see the spaceport city on the far left side when that one comes out. You always like to have the street on one side, um, and uh, that way you can use it to go to any of the other sites. So Angelo looked for something, but then didn't uh, find it. So now he's uh, giving a verify to uh, Menzel. Maybe he was using that to search for a docking bay first, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure what he was looking for. If he was, if he found the Raltier site first, um, but yeah, maybe he declared a docking bay search first, and then uh, said, "Oh, while I'm in there, I'll get that so I'll Raltier site out." But you'll get to verify because there's no docking bay. So, I'm guessing that's probably what it is. Pay some force. Look like three or four. Gonna put uh, some sort of schmoop down to Raltier, I'm guessing. Simalu V. Uh, his main game text is that he draws Battle Destiny and he's an Imperial. Doesn't really do a lot for the deck in terms of his game text, but he is an Imperial. And. Uh, draws Battle Destiny, so that's why he gets played in Rob's feet. So now, you know, if this definitely looks like he's, you know, planning a flip here. 
thinking about which characters thinking about which characters he wants to go to which sites he's got Ozzel in his hand who can go for free that'll give him one and then he can docking by chance of the other guys that'll give him the easiest flip but probably not the most secure flip uh, put the Emperor down that'd probably be a pretty strong play uh, yeah there's Ozzel to the street and then I'm thinking he's going to either put the vehicle out, the Tempest 1. Oh, no, he's just going to go right to the move phase. Move and flip. So, you know, that's... Um, then he'll probably move Ozzel over to uh, Similu's site with the street game text. He's going to use his ROPS pull. So he might be worth it to get the site since now he can't pull it. But uh, there's also, you know, a multitude of other good cards he might want. He pulls a red card. Nope. Okay. We'll see what he ends up going with. He went with the red card. I think it was a Tarkin's Bounty. Um, not 100% on that, but it looks an awful lot like a Tarkin's Bounty. Um, okay. So now, I mean, like I said... See if he moves Ozzel over to the sh uh, the office. Yeah, that's what he does here. So now he's got two dudes at each of his sites. He's flipped. Um, Light Sight can flip him back with like a Tantive to the Raltier system and then, you know, like a uh, dude to the other site there. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I would have gone so light. He had the Emperor in his hand. He has the Walker in his hand. Maybe go a little heavier so that you can... Uh, not be so uh, it's just with two uh, two Imperials at each site is fine but you can get cleared out by like an EPP so Angelo draws up to a pretty full hand and uh, We'll see Chris play some cards here. Pull some cards here. So was it a hover cam with Walkling, probably? And then uh, I couldn't quite tell what that other card was. <clears throat> he uses, I've decided to go back. Or pulls that with his objective. So he is running the uh, full gamut of the political effects. It would seem. Alright, so now Chris is going to activate... One, three... Should be getting about 11 or 12 force by my count. And I'll get the hover cam out and that'll help. I don't think either player has played Battle Plan yet, so I think Menzel could get a free drain in at the Senate if he wanted to. I don't see a Coward Shield or a Battle Order Battle Plan out. Could have had a free ping of one there. Oh, I guess then never mind. The Rob's objective would make it a zero, so I take that back. All right, so there's the hover cam. Angelo puts it underneath the Senate. So maybe Chris will forget about it sometime. Yeah. <laughs> Gets that game text a little more present. So now we'll see what Chris wants to do with these two rap sites. I mean, I think if he has that EPP ray in hand, which it looks like he does, you can go clear a site with that and then put another character down at the other site, try to get him cleared. He's just gonna draw. Okay. Maybe he didn't like his hand. Got the hover cam out at least. Another one of his political effects. But, um... 
drawing a pretty big hand. He might be looking for a certain card that he wants to, uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, Ray with lightsaber. So Katano, I think, as well. <clears throat> some more senators. Maybe that's what he was searching for, was some more senators. Uses the all wings report in combo to go find a unpiloted ship. Card might be worthy of grabbing in this matchup, but, uh... depends on what uh, Angelo is expecting the game to go like, if he wants to grab a defensive interrupt or uh, an offensive interrupt like all wings combo. And he is going to grab, yeah. I mean, that, that card gets grabbed a lot of the time, so. So now we know Chris has, uh, I think he pulled the Azure Angel as his first, uh, all wings, and then he's now he's got the Falcon as well, so maybe he's planning to make this a space game. But hey, they both have they both have a lot of cards in their hands, so we'll definitely see where this game's gonna go. Senator, 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 Falcon, and uh, Anakin, draw their fire. Um Just trying to get a scope of what Menzel's got in his hands. Lando. Alright, so since uh, Chris didn't really do much on his turn, just drew a bunch of cards, we'll see um, We'll see what Angelo does here. Um, if I was him, you know, he's, he doesn't really have a lot of pressure coming from him from light side. Um, but he also doesn't seem to have a lot of spacey type cards, um, as far as I could tell. Um, so maybe, uh, maybe just put another dude out to that other site. Puts the Emperor Shuttle... Okay, I think I see what he's uh, got planned here. Pulls the Emperor's shuttle with uh, Dasani. And uh, I'll probably just put that in his hand. Um, put another guy out to the Spaceport Street. Some guy who draws Destiny. Uh, I think there's like a Lieutenant Commander Ardan in his hand. There's also a Blizzard 4. That would be fine play as well. Uh, he's got Mahdi in his hand. Mahdi likes to go aboard a Star Destroyer, so usually the binder in these uh, more recent ROPS builds. And uh, honestly, with this deck, you could invade the Senate um, with some schmoops and then just draw a really high battle destiny. Um, and that's uh, definitely an option since he only has the uh, two Senators down. If uh, Angela wants to, he could try to mess around with the Senate. Yeah, Angela was probably just looking at the objective to see what what the dealio is with because uh, game text of characters is cancelled but um, of non-senators is cancelled but like some of your schmoopy imperials and rebels and stuff get a, a small politics boost so might, <clears throat> might could see Angelo decide to uh, you know, just put a couple guys to the Senate, draw Destiny, add three or four or five to it with his Rob's objective, and try to clear those dudes out. As a Senate player, if you get a hand that doesn't have a lot of Senators, that is kind of a fear early if uh, decks can attack you. But um, I'm guessing Angelo is just going to go with a character down to the Spaceport Street um, and then sort of save a space build up a space hand <clears throat> so that way when he goes to space he can go with the shuttle the emperor um a lot of stuff to sort of be able to sustain space and start getting some ping four strains through it's probably what i would do if i was playing this game 
Just put like Commander Ardan to the street and then call it good. So yeah, Angelo pays one to use a surface defense. Surface defense is a starting interrupt, but it also has some use game text that's pretty neat that lets you download an effect um, for one force as opposed to using like an accelerate that costs three. Goes and gets an Imperial Justice, so that's uh, one thing about surface defense and its counterpart, don't tread on me. Um, they do download the effect, so you can't just like put it in your hand. Whereas like accelerate just takes an effect into hand. so. You know, there's some drawbacks that you have to do it on your turn and, and all that, but um, only paying one force uh, is pretty nice <clears throat> to get your effects out. So he puts the justice out. Um, we're going to have to shuffle up and toss a few cards on there. Those cards are Blizzard Scout 1, and Barrier, and the Jamara Jades. <clears throat> okay, no, actually, it's uh, something special planned for them. Not a Barrier. But, uh, it was Mara Jade in the Decimator, or whatever it's called. And then I think a Blizzard Scout 1. Okay, <clears throat> there's Lieutenant Commander Ardan. He goes to the street. Gets another raw tier site for the bonus, the battle destiny bonus. Um, we'll see if he decides to go to space. Getting the decimator uh, stacked on the justice was probably not something Angela wanted. <clears throat> these uh, rob stacks that uh, you know rely on these uh, shuttles and stuff, they don't run a ton of ships, so. I have seen the binder, I have seen, you know, the shuttle, so Angela might be pretty, pretty decent in space with this uh, build of Rob's, but we'll see what he gets. So he could load up a shuttle pretty good with, like, Admiral Mahdi for a command, and then... Okay, he actually is going to go to the Senate, so that is a Krennic. The uh, undercover spy Krennic, not the Death Star Krennic. Uh, he goes Krennic and Mithrandaruro to the Senate. So yeah, I think we're going to see a Senate battle here. Try to clear out those, those dudes. So it's a pretty strong play when they only have the two Senators there. Um, especially, uh, you know, getting a Palpatine off the table... And uh, Mon Mothma, if he thinks he can get both of them off the table, <clears throat> that could be pretty good. He also goes with Mahdi, so yeah, he's definitely going to contest this Senate pretty strong. So this will be this will be neat. <clears throat> get some action in this game on the early side. Alright, so I think he went ahead and battled, because he's looking at his justice cards, but maybe not. <clears throat> Alright, and then we're not sure which political effect is suspended, but you'd have to uh, imagine that it's one that Menzel doesn't want suspended. So yeah, he's going to then initiate the battle here. I don't think there's anything else he has left to do. Dumped three characters to the Senate, so... We'll see uh, how this shakes out. <coughs> so Angelo decides to take a card off of Justice. It's the Blizzard Scout one.
draws a destiny. It's a interrupt of some kind or effect. Couldn't tell what the number was. Chris draws destiny of Padme. Uses uh, Palpatine's game tech to take it in hand. Or Mothma's game text. Palpatine's game text that will add um, Angelo's destiny to his total. Actually, might not be able to use that because of justice. So, Angelo forfeits Mahdi. We'll see what characters get forfeited if he's able to clear both senators from light side. That could be pretty bad for Chris. He does have a lot of senators in his hand, so a potential counterbeat could be pretty bad. Okay, so that one was suspended. The, uh,. I've decided to go back, I think is the nine title of that one. Looks like it's just going to be Palpatine that gets forfeited <coughs> from light side. I don't know if he's still flipped, but maybe uh, Angelo's letting him use the, f the backside of the objective during the battle before he flips back. I think you have to have at least two senators. And then Angelo's going to move some guys around. I'm just going to check on that Senate objective on my phone because I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, it says flip this card if you have less than two senators. So he should be back on the... Uh... Oh, yeah, he is back on the zero side. Okay. <clears throat> They're adding up uh, their politics to make sure that the hover cam doesn't get canceled. I think it's still good. And I, I, Menzel has a lot... Or sorry, yeah. Chris has a lot of uh, senators in his hand, so he should be able to uh, to dump a few senators and uh, clear out these Imperials. At least one of them. No code clearance from uh, Angelo. Code clearance would make each of those guys forfeit plus three, but... So I imagine we're just gonna see Chris dump a bunch of Senators, clear out, Puts out the last political effect. All right, so I wonder what uh, what Chris's game plan is here. Like I said, I mean, <clears throat> he's uh, he got uh, Palpatine cleared out, which is never what you want. There's uh, another copy of Palpatine. Yeah, the deck probably runs three or four Palpatines, so get him back out there. A couple more senators. Get these Imperials out of your out of your business. Yeah, there's uh, Leanna Mierin, or whatever her name is. Um, or maybe not. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Yaru, uh... Alright, so now we'll see what else uh, Chris brings down to the sun. He's got the Yaru, uh, the Palpatine, and the Liana this turn. Gonna use it to search for political effect. There's none there, because he has all four out. It's got some decent destinies, and the uh, Senate objective makes all your senators' destiny increase as well. So destinies look good, um, and with Angelo not having a code clearance out, this will make uh, make it pretty likely that he's going to clear out the Senate this turn. But uh, Chris did have to spend this whole turn basically just doing that instead of doing anything to disrupt any of those Raltier sites. Two of which uh, Angela left, you know, really weakly defended with just Ardan and uh, Similu. So then uh, Chris plays Draw Their Fire. That'll help uh, push some damage through in this battle and get our card retrieved. Although, um, yeah, Angela's just going to play Coward, so that way um, Chris won't actually be retrieving anything. Um, this turn, because Chris doesn't have uh, any battlegrounds, let alone two battlegrounds. Chris also goes with Padme, the uh, senator version of Padme, or the version of Padme that acts like a senator, better said. All right, so then we're going to get a pay one to battle. Angelo's going to have to lose a card. Looks like there's some foil V-slips being handed out. Nice. Wish I could get a couple of those. Angelo is still deciding what card he wants to lose to um, the draw their fire ping. He looks like he likes his hand a lot. Um, the altar, maybe you could lose. Um, not really sure what effects are in there for the altar, but we have seen a few senses from Chris's deck when we verified, so maybe he wants to save it to cancel a sense. Um, looks like Angelo's just going to... Yeah, say so out of the cards in his hand, the altar looks the most one that I would lose, but then you can lose. Yeah, there you go. There's an Imperial off the top, so then you can retrieve uh, uh, retrieve an Imperial Trooper or exchange it with uh, the Rops objective when you draw Destiny. If you really want that Stormtrooper Garrison, you can get it back. You can get any card in your Lost Pile back just about uh, in Rops with the uh, swap text. Uh, Angelo takes something special planned for them into hand <clears throat> off of justice so there won't be any multiple battle destinies or modifying of battle destinies here uh, Chris draws a five for battle destiny it was a rescue in the clouds oh Angelo draws the last rop site as a zero that's pretty bad for Angelo um, getting that zero there like he was already gonna get probably cleared out of this battle anyway um, but uh, not clearing any of those characters uh, by drawing a zero is uh, definitely not what he wanted to do. So that's definitely a good swing back in uh, Chris's favor, but uh, he did have to spend his whole turn just doing this battle. So... Not sure what the totals are, but not a lot for Angelo, especially with drawing that zero. I mean, you guys see he gets to add three to the total, so he will clear out one senator with the Rops objective. But, um, doesn't look like there's any overflow 
at least. Both those guys have, like, Krennic forfeits for five, and Thrawn forfeits for five or six, so, um, yeah, I think he's six for Mithrandu, so, um, you know, he had uh, a good 11, and then the three Battle Destiny, so, covered for, like, 14 there. Chris is going to play a Rescue in the Clouds, because he's got an EPP Obi-Wan, a Jedi Levitation, and I think another Senator, Senator Palpatine. So he's going to take the Obi-Wan, it looked like to me. EPP OB is a really good card against Rops, because he can, he can uh, clear out one of these weekly held sites, uh, like Simulu or Commander Ardan. Coming helpful when he wants to start uh, attacking the ground. All right, and uh, Chris is just going to draw some cards. Looks like Angelo has uh, something he wants to play. Okay, he's just going to exchange uh, Kyrkanos with Admiral Mahdi, it looked like. Do look like I see a Tantive in uh, Chris's hand, so that that's just going to be really big. Tantive is a huge ship uh, right now for light side, and it's really good against Rops because they can deploy to the Raltier system um, without uh, presence or force icons, and then it makes that system a battleground um, while you have the the Tantive there. So Tantive is uh, pretty much the most played ship for light side right now. Um, I don't think there's any question about that. The uh, the home one package had its moments, but uh, I think it's just proven too costly. You can just load the uh, Tantive up with um, a lot of characters, Podamarins and Lando Calrissians and what have you. All right, so yeah, Menzel uses the uh, Senate. Uh, Defensive shield to suspend it puts it right over the political effect that's suspended for the turn. So that's it's quite helpful for us viewers. Thank you. Um, looks like we're paying to force strain. Paying to drain for one seems like not the best trade, although. Um, I'm not even sure if Battle Order is out. So now, Angelo's going to go to space, and he's going to go to the Chandrilla system. And he's going to get the, the Emperor and the Emperor shuttle. And then he's just going to load it up with, like, all of the pilots. So Admiral Mahdi, he wanted the Admiral so that way he could use uh, Imperial Command in space. Even though Mahdi doesn't do much, um... He's more of a Star Destroyer helper than uh, just a good pilot, but he'll still add a couple to that, I believe. Um, but he's a, he's an Admiral, and that's what you really want for uh, playing Imperial Command. Not the uh, preferred co-pilot with uh, the Emperor Shuttle, usually like a Grand Moff Tarkin virtual to be on there. He's... Uh, He's usually the guy you want, but um, Mahdi has the flexibility of being uh, being an admiral, so it's pretty solid. But we know Chris has a pretty good space hand. He's played two All Wings combos to get ships. Like he got the Falcon and he got the Azure Angel, I believe it was. Um, and uh, so he could come down with uh, some space beats here. And Angelo's only got the one card left on Justice. So once um, once we get that card pulled off, then uh, Chris will be able to do a lot more in terms of manipulating destinies. So he's got the Captain Han, so he can get the Falcon with uh, squadron assignments. So that'll be good. I think we'll definitely see that come out this turn.
All right, so now we're just going to see what Chris does this turn. He can maybe use that EPP Obi-Wan that he pulled to go clear out a ROP site and then put the Tantive down to the raw tier system and load it up with some pilots. Um, he could try to attack the Emperor's shuttle. Um, I'm pretty sure that Angelo doesn't have the Imperial Command in hand, but there is one card that's red card in his hand that I'm not sure of. I thought it was a Tarkin's Bounty, but it could also be an Imperial Command. So um, He's going to flash the Falcon, which that tells me he's going to go to Chandrilla um, and attack this uh, Emperor shuttle. could also go to Fondor, I suppose. There goes the Chandrilla. And then a barrier is played by Angelo to barrier the Falcon. The barrier is grabbed. Okay, so we kind of had to see that coming if you're if you're the light side player. Um, Raps is a deck that likes to battle on its terms, not necessarily on yours. So barriers, evasion, getting out of stuff is definitely part of it. So there's the Azure Angel and uh, Anakin Skywalker, Padawan Learner. Um, you know his his uh, ship doesn't get played a lot over here in the states, but. Um, he often just gets you know put on the Tantive as a, just a really good pilot. Um, and maybe some more flexibility with him now uh, and uh, Anakin's lightsaber virtual that can get pulled with Jedi business. Maybe uh, maybe his uh, weapon destiny techs will get a little more used, but him on his matching ship can be really strong because you can cancel. Um, it has uh, game text is very similar to the conquest on the dark side where you can cancel a non-immune sense interrupt uh, when Anakin or R2-D2 is aboard it. Um, so he could like potentially cancel an imperial command or cancel um, you know some sort of uh, battle interrupt that uh, dark side would want to play uh, with that uh, Azure Angel text. So it's an underused ship, I think, but um, with the way uh, the way light side has been going with uh, more more capital ships and not matching ships, um, a card that doesn't get used as maybe as much as it could. So now, with the Falcon getting uh, barriered, I'm not sure you want to battle with just the uh, Angel and Anakin against that loaded up. So the Emperor adds a Destiny on it. It's immune to attrition completely. So it's you know it's two Destiny and completely immune. Whereas you know I think the uh, Anakin would just add three to that ship, so he's just got power six and one destiny. Um, with uh, the Han and the Falcon being there, all of a sudden you're looking at having an extra destiny from Han and the Falcon, being able to potentially redraw and cancel one of theirs if they don't pull a card off justice. So I think we'll probably see Chris just play it safe and not battle here. But um, he's going to pay one. So I think he's going to pay one to initiate a battle. Angelo will lose the Imperial Decree Virtual from hand to the first strike damage, or sorry, battle, uh, draw their fire damage. Um, now we'll see if Angelo wants to try to play the command that he might have in hand. He has a dark time in hand. But the real key, he's not going to pull a card off Justice, I don't think, because like I said, uh, Anakin only gets one Destiny um, on that, so it's a pretty even number in terms of power, 
Um, but Darkseid's going to be drawing two Battle Destinies because the Emperor's shuttle has one when the Emperor's on there. And then they're going to be adding three to their total with the Rops objective. So... Not super sure if that was the best battle that Chris could have initiated here. Maybe he had a track six, because he did draw the six, which then Anakin, I think, will add one to. So that'll be a seven. So I'm thinking he's got around 13. Plus, maybe there could be some senator manipulation with some political effects, and he can add one of Angelo's destinies to his power with Palpatine. But more than likely, Chris is going to have to lose something from this battle, whereas Angelo might not. Or if he does, he's going to have the chance to, to resupply and battle potentially just a Falcon with Han on it next turn. So, um, not sure. Oh, and yeah, Angelo draws a five, which then, yeah, Chris will add, add to his total. And then use the political effect to subtract from it. And then he draws another destiny, which is, I can't tell what that card is, it's some sort of imperial. So it's probably a low number. <clears throat> So yeah, we'll see uh, when the dust settles. Okay, I think that's a Janus. Is the character that he drew, I think, Destiny 2. And then he drew a 5 with the Force Push. He's going to swap Veers for Mithrandu with the Raps objective. But yeah, when the dust settles, we'll see what Chris has to lose from this battle and if uh, Angelo has any battle damage that he needs to satisfy. But I mean, worst case, he could lose the Mahdi, and then get somebody else up there. Um, or he could even lose the Emperor if he has another one, and then just plop a fresh Emperor back on there. Um, which, that is what he does. So, he loses an Emperor off the shuttle, and then Chris loses Anakin. But now it's going to be Angelo's turn. I'm guessing Angelo has another Emperor in hand. I think I just saw it when he went through there, yeah. Um, so he can just plop a fresh Emperor on there and resu resume his normally scheduled programming. Yeah, I like the way this game is going for Angelo. That barrier was really big. I think that was a battle that I would not have initiated if I was Chris. Um, unless I had some other way to get get something else up, up on that, you know, in space that turn. Um, maybe you go with Anakin first and see if that gets barriered so then you can maybe go with the Falcon Han and another character um, Not sure what else he has in his hand if he had like a chewy or a La he had Lando if he could have afforded all that That's a lot of force um, Then you go Lando Han Falcon and that doesn't get barriered and then maybe go through with with that but um, Without knowing exactly what the force counts were and all that so I probably also maybe just would have gone and tried to clear out a ROP site and then put my Tantive um, with Anakin on it at uh, the Raw Tier system and tried to flip him back. Um, that might have been uh, a better course of action for that turn. Of course, maybe, you know, your Obi-Wan might get barriered, but, like, I think, I think that's a better play in this situation. But we'll see how it goes.
Angelo's doing some ping four strains of three damage total, one at each site there. Um, puts a fresh Emperor on the shuttle. Um, if Goldenrod was out, then he'd have to pay two for that, so must be out. <clears throat> Alright, so now we've got the same exact ship as was in the last battle, going up against just Captain Han and the Falcon. So, I mean, that's, that's one destiny and six power, and the chance to redraw a destiny. Um, if you're if you got enough for save for it, I'm not sure Chris does. And then Angelo's gonna have to suspend a different political effect this turn. It's fine. Um, yeah, I like Angelo. I like Angelo's positioning here. And he wouldn't even lose too much tempo by just keeping his ship in space and moving over to Fondor. Um, but I think you can attack that Falcon pretty easily. I'm not sure what kind of reacts or whatever he might be anticipating, but he decides to suspend the same political effect. Goes with the Tempest to the docking bay. Yeah, you just can reinforce your raw tier sites a little bit, so that way you're uh, better better protected against an invasion. I might put another pilot character or Smoopy dude up on the uh, up on the shuttle if I'm planning to stay there. Alright, so yeah, we'll see what else Angelo decides to go with. His hand looks a little light on characters at this point. Um, and with your ship being fully immune, drawing to Destiny, I think you can battle that Falcon. At least get a Captain Han off of it. Win a battle, retrieve an Imperial with Domination. Just keep the keep the Rops train going. This deck is pretty, pretty hard to... Um, beat once it gets this kind of a setup going where it has more battlegrounds than you do it has them pretty well defended can react to multiple locations with blizzard scout one uh can play imperial command in space um you know has a trample for like a chewbacca invasion like he's pretty well um you know covered against a lot of things and then he can just initiate a battle exchange a card retrieve when he wins if he gets another domination out you get the double dip there so um, Rob certainly is pretty polarizing right now a lot of people like it a lot of people think it's a little too strong there might be some things about it that could be tweaked to make it a little less um, a little less of an engine but we'll see what um, what they decide to do and how the uh, upcoming new set affects things I'd like to see Lightside be able to play a deck that's kind of like Rops that has... I mean, I guess Diplo is sort of a little bit like that, but I wish there was some more uh, options for Lightside to play. You know, decks like No Idea or decks like, uh, you know, that are similar to, to that. Rebel Strike Team comes to mind as well. Okay, so, I mean, if... Uh, if Angelo decides to battle in space, he could take advantage of draw their fire, get that Emperor back, cause a ping damage, make him lose Captain Han at least, or or maybe just the uh, Angel, but he's in a strong position here.
it does bay one to battle. He'll uh, presumably cause to draw their fire damage. Angelo retrieves the Emperor with Draw Their Fire. Chris loses the All Wings combo from hand. Probably couldn't play it this turn because it is grabbed, and he would have to pay two to play it. Um, uses a Dark Time for the Rebellion, probably to uh, make it so that Battle Destinies can't be altered this turn. Draws Destiny of... Yeah, he'll use Palpatine to add that to his total. Must be a good number. Probably a 5. Angelo just had to lose 2 Force. Not exactly sure why. Chris draws a five. Angelo drew pretty high, I think. I couldn't see what the red card was, but I think he drew somewhere in the vicinity of ten total with his uh, modifier. I think it was like a five and a two naturally, and then adding three with Rops. So that causes him to lose Han and the Angel. Um, Angelo should be completely immune, but I wouldn't. Whoa! He dumped the whole ship into the lost pile. Yeah, I I don't know if I missed something where um, Chris canceled all of the immunity, but I mean that thing had an Emperor on it. And Mahdi, um, there's little reason I can see that he would have to lose that whole boat. If uh, in the comments when you're watching this, if you saw something that I didn't, um, there was something that caused Angelo to lose two force. I didn't notice what that was. And now he's going to trample his own character to get a card back in hand. or in, in Some weird stuff is going on in this game. Um, uses something special plan for them to retrieve a ship. I don't know why he had to... I just... I don't know what happened here. <laughs> And now he's moving everybody to the docking bay. And then docking bay transiting over to the executor. Yeah, um, this game just got super weird.
Super weird. I have no idea what is going on. I have a feeling Angelo is just trying to get as many cards in Life Force as possible. Maybe they're like about to call time, or they just called time or something. Um, that I, I guess yeah, that that would be the only explanation that I could think of is they called time, and Angelo wanted to get as many cards in Life Force as he possibly possibly could, and that included forfeiting his own ship just so that he could retrieve it later um, and then and then doing the trample uh, to get a trample out of his hand and then yeah the, all these plays now make sense if I look at the timer that it's on my video player here they are at over an hour since this game started so um, maybe they're super duper duper close in life force and Angelo had to get those couple cards back in because that's the, that's the only the only explanation for this play is that and then Chris puts two characters down to flip the Rops objective back but that's actually going to allow Angelo to put another card into life force You can just take any card from hand and put it in use. So that actually nets Chris, or sorry, uh, Angelo, one, one more life force. Uh, now he looks like he's going to change his mind and not do that play once he realized that. Awfully nice of you, Angelo, to let him take that back. The life force counts look similar. If I had to guess, Angelo is ahead. Um, Chris uses Walkling to retrieve a force. Yeah, they must be really, really close. So we'll see what these life force totals come down to. <sighs> uses the Senate objective to put his senators back. And then recycles Lando back into life force. All right, so now we'll see some pile counts. They look pretty similar, so I guess we shall see. All right, there's a handshake. Um, not easy to tell who won that game. I guess I'll go look at the standings um, in the thread and see how that one went. If I was Angelo, I'd be pretty disappointed to lose that game. <laughs> 